you can now control your consistent AI character, adjust the camera from any angle, and transform your AI images and videos into epic cinematic shots. You can position your character wherever you want, plus control the angle of the camera. And you can achieve this by effectively using Crea AI's powerful tools, along with the new 1 2.1 model, which you can access directly in Crea AI or run locally with Comfy UI. So in this video, I'll show you how to create a consistent AI character sheet using the new Crea Chat tool and how to train a LoRa model with this. We will position a 3D model in any pose and angle and use it in Crea real time to generate images. Finally, we'll use the 1 2.1 model to turn them into videos. So to create a consistent character, we will go to the Chat tab. Powered by DeepSeek, this new tool brings the power of every Crea feature into a chat interface. And while I was testing creating the perfect prompt for the consistent character sheet, I learned that uploading a 9-phase image grid tremendously helps in getting the final result. And on my blog post, which I will link in the description, you can just right-click on the image and save the image as. You can also copy the prompt, what I'm going to do as well, Control c And now I will open a new chat by clicking here. I will paste in the prompt and drag the consistent character sheet in the prompt box and hit generate. And sometimes I get a message that is unable to do it, but then I just type try it anyway and it works. Then I mostly do five to six more runs. I also ask for more happy faces, upload the image grid again and remind the AI it should use it. And if you're going to use this prompt, then make sure to change this prompt to create your own consistent character. And these are four of my favorite outcomes. And for this tutorial, I took this one. So to cut out the images, I'm going to go to splitterimageonline.co. I'm going to click on upload and select the image I just chose. And then I'm going to set it to split into pieces. We have three rows, three columns, and I'm going to click on split image. Now it split it and I'm going to download them all. Since every single image is now 340 by 340 pixels, we're going to upscale it. And Crea AI has a very good upscaler. So I'm going to drag my image in here. And I will choose upscale four times, which will be good enough for our training. And then I'm going to set the resemblance to 100, leave the strength to 60, and I will select match color. So now we have a higher resolution. And to download it, I'm going to click on the three dots. If they turn up, yes, here they are. And then I'm going to go to edit image, and then I can select save. And unfortunately, I didn't find a way to do a batch upscale here in Crea AI. So I'm going to upscale my images in Topaz Gigapixel AI. Here I can drag all my nine images in straight away. And automatically, it adds the settings I last used on my last image. And I am pretty amazed by the results. So the settings are, I used four time upscale. And then I use either standard or high fidelity. They both do the job for me. Then the most important thing is this face recovery. Look what happens if I turn it off. And now I turn it on again. And the quality is just amazing. I'm also very impressed by the quality of the upscaler in Crea AI, but as I can run this locally on my computer, this is the best option for me. I also make sure that I leave it on realistic. And now I can click on export nine images and all the work is being done for me. So to train our model, often referred to as a LoRa, we're going to click on the train button. And then we're gonna click on upload images and now I'm going to select all my images now we are getting some feedback from Crea. And you see that my number of images is a bit low, but out of experience, I know that you can do it with nine images. The resolution is good. So now I'm going to name it Susan, open up the settings, gonna choose the character style to train on. Then I'm gonna leave the training steps to 250 and I'm also call the trigger word Susan. And I wanna use it with the real-time model and now I can generate it. And now you can see it is in training phase and normally this takes between five and 10 minutes. Now to connect this with a real-time model, I'm gonna go to generate and then select real-time. Now on this icon, if we click on it, we can choose styles. Here are my styles. I'll select Susan and I'll add my prompt in here. Now make sure that you use the trigger word, which is Susan in my case. Now with this slider, you can lower the strength or set the strength to one, which I would recommend. Now, if we go to the model tab, we can see that we can only use Aurora in the Flux real time. Now the real fun begins. We're going to create a 3D model to control the camera angle and positioning of our consistent AI character in Crea real time. To create the 3D model, I'm going to use a free app called Post My Art. And on my blog post, I've created multiple pre-made models in various colors, allowing you to represent all nationalities, 
plus you'll find a full range of positions to frame your shots. Now for those of you who want to create a model in a specific position, I will quickly explain how it works. You can delete the image by clicking on it and entering delete. And by clicking on here, you can enter a new character. And some are for the paid version, but there is a lot available. I'm going to use the teen fit female. And if we click on her, now the joints become available. You can click on a joint and then you can select a line to move it. To be honest, you have to play around a bit, but it is definitely worth doing it. And as long as the character is selected, this menu is open. And now I can select the color and I can set it to the color that I prefer. Now to export it, we click on this button and here you can set the dimension and then you click here to export the image. And this is the final result. There are two main methods to use or export a 3D model. The first method works best for close-up shots, while the second offers even more control and is ideal for various other shot types. So let's start with the first method. So for the low angle close-up shot, I'm going to use this image. Right click on it and save the image as. And as you can see, I've already loaded it in Krea real time. And the way you can do this is by either clicking on this button to upload the image or you can just drag it in from your browser and then it's there. And since the images are transparent, you don't need to remove the background. But if you need it in future, then right click on the image and choose remove background. And I would recommend changing the background to a color, like a bit of gray, and add a bit of noise. Or Susan Laura is still loaded as I showed earlier in the tutorial. Now here you can set the aspect ratio. And I would recommend to set the speed on slowest, making it a very inexpensive way to frame your shot. And make sure the Flux real-time model is selected. And now we get to the most important thing, and this is this AI strength slider. And it took me a while to figure out how it works. But if you go all the way down to zero, it just copies our 3D model. And if you go all the way up to 100, it just copies exactly our Aurora style and the prompt. So we need to find the sweet spot where we capture the outline and framing from our 3D model while ensuring the image closely resembles our Susan model. Now the reason why I made this model orange is that because if the model is white, then we get a very white 3D model. So I would recommend to go even a bit more down so that our image on the right side doesn't have any highlights. Now we're going to drag the image to the left and we're going to right click and remove the background. Now I can delete this one, move the model out of the way and I'll also delete this one. And now I'll right click the image and convert it to 3D. This roughly takes about a minute and gives me the time to show you that you can now control your consistent AI character. I can remove the gray background now by adding a photo. And I'm going to add this image and I'm also going to add this to the prompt. The reason I'm using this workflow is that now, since our 3D model closely resembles our Susan model, I can set the AI strength higher. This allows me to get the maximum quality out of my Susan Laura model. And now it's a matter of experimenting with the size and angle of our 3D model, along with the AI strength slider. So this is the shot I was sort of hoping for. And now if I remove the 3D model, you can see the difference. And you see it's also a low angle, but it's not the quality as you can get with this. I really like it. To show you that the prompting is also very important, I'm going to delete the low angle shot from below. And now you can see that, ooh, I'm very safe with YouTube. Almost hit it, but I'm safe. And now you can see that the prompting is also very important. Okay, let's quickly add this back. And there we are again. And to help you with shot types, in the blog post I mentioned earlier, I've added 18 shot types to guide you in framing every shot you need. If you want to dive deeper, you could consider getting my ultimate prompt toolkit, which not only has 1000 plus visual keywords, but also 35 pages on mastering camera perspectives when AI ignores your shot type. Before I forget, let me quickly show you how to move the 3D model. Click the middle button to rotate it up and down. Use the left button and drag up or down to adjust the model size. The right button expands the image vertically. And if you hover over the top, you see a small cross. Click and move it to set the model's angle. Now let's create a high angle shot using the powerful second method, which offers maximum control. So for this shot, I used this image. I added high angle shots from above to the prompt, set the AI strength to 67, and then dragged the image to the left, deleted the background, and this time I won't make a 3D image from it, but instead use the image since it closely resembles our Laura model Susan. Now I'll add a background image to show you what's possible. If I move the image to the side, I can access these handles to make her even bigger. Now I can place my consistent character wherever I want while maintaining the correct angle. 
And by playing with AI strength, I can further tweak it and get even more resemblance with our AI Laura model. Now, if I remove her, then you will see that there is no woman anymore. And this is because the AI strength also listens to the background image. So let's remove that and replace it with a green background. Then I'll add a field of flowers to the prompt and make a few adjustments to refine it to my liking. And now if we remove our image, then we can see what the prompt would do with without it. And for this, we need to set the AI strength to 100 to show what the AI does with only the prompt and our LoRa model. Both images look great, but the left one stands out to me. And the freedom to place my consistent character in any position and at any angle showcases the power of this workflow. And I'd love to see more people explore it. So I created a dedicated channel in my Discord group to share insights and improve our skills together. Now let's turn this image into a video with the new 1 2.1 model. But first we need to upscale it. So in Krea real time we will go down here and click on the upscale button. And now we will use the same settings as shown before. And then we will go back to the home tab and then we will select the video generation. Now we go down to the bottom left and you can choose your model. Here we're going to choose the 1 2.1. Then I'm going to drag my image in here and I'm going to add camera zooms into the eyes of the person in the prompt box. I'm going to leave the resolution to 720 and also the aspect ratio to landscape and then hit generate. And then to download it, we have to click here on the download button. Now the image is a bit shaky because it runs at only 16 frames per second. To smooth it out, I applied frame interpolation and upscaled it using Topaz Video AI. However, you can also do the interpolation for free with flow frames, which I've linked in the description. Another way to shape your images is by creating a consistent style or setting the mood using mood modifiers and color tones. And in these videos, I'll show you exactly how to do this. If you're new to AI image generation, I recommend starting with this one. And if you're more experienced, I suggest checking out that one.